Number six, do your best to understand your client's personal preferences, but avoid probing for personal information. Number seven, acknowledge a client when he or she speaks to you, but never get involved in a discussion involving religion, politics, or any other controversial topic. Number eight, the professional chauffeur should always be ready to provide a business card or company brochure. Number nine, never allow a curious person to look in the back of your vehicle when someone is renting that vehicle. Number 10, anticipate and meet the needs of your clients. Number 11, never take personal phone calls while you have clients in your vehicle. Number 12, carefully check the vehicle as the client is leaving to make sure that nothing has been left behind. Number 13, always make sure your passengers are exiting on the curbside. If the vehicle has passengers on both sides, Make sure you get out and physically assist them. One of the most important elements of the chauffeur's job is his or her ability to quickly communicate with your dispatchers and sometimes your fellow chauffeurs. This is accomplished through a variety of devices from the standard two-way radio to the cell phone to the most common device in the industry, the Nextel radio. These radios operate on cell phone technology and are designed for instant two-way communication between driver and dispatch and driver to driver. When you are engaged in a conversation with another Nextel user, your radio is locked into that radio's frequency and no one can interrupt that conversation. Keep your driver-to-driver -driver conversation to a minimum in case your client or office is trying to reach you. Speak slowly and pronounce your words clearly. Use the codes that your company uses. Never use profanity. Keep the conversation short, especially when you are with your client. Many limousine companies use status codes to simplify and reduce the amount of conversation in their vehicles. Your codes may sound like this. Code 10, I'm on location waiting for client. Code 20, I have received my next assignment and I understand it is given. Code 30, client and vehicle, we're on our way. Code 40, the client has been dropped off and the job is finished. Communicating with codes will also portray an image that your company is a highly organized and professional organization. Call your codes in the dispatch promptly and without extra verbiage. You are busy and your job is very important, but understand and recognize that your dispatcher is as busy and important as you are. Your company's run sheets or trip assignment sheets are the most important documents within the limousine company. They contain your passenger's name, address, telephone number, their pickup location, drop-off address, and the time and date of their trip. The run sheet also contains payment instructions for your client with details on any fees you must collect at the time services are rendered. Read the run sheet or your Nextel screen carefully as soon as it's given to you. If you do not understand anything, Ask your dispatcher or supervisor immediately. Do not be afraid to ask questions. Your supervisor will do anything to avoid making a mistake when dealing with the client's travel arrangements. Note whether the trip is AM or PM immediately. It would take a stadium to hold the chauffeurs and dispatchers who have made the AM PM mistake over the years. Many companies use military time to prevent this mistake. So make sure you understand when the trip is immediately after it's been assigned to you. Also, make sure you understand whether it's an airport pickup or drop off or whether your client is being picked up at his or her home or office. 
Also, make sure you know where your vehicle's owner's card, proof of insurance, and any permits are. This is very important should police or airport personnel detain you or ask you to produce trip documents. This is especially important because in many states, chauffeured limousine service is only permitted on a prearranged basis. Chauffeurs are occasionally asked to produce their run sheet or trip manifest by the authorities. It's important that the chauffeur produce this document quickly. In many airports, undercover police or representatives of the Public Utility Commission will attempt to solicit a chauffeur to take them somewhere. This is strictly prohibited. It's never a good idea and will often result in losing your job or even being fined or arrested. We can put together the longest and most comprehensive training program that you could imagine, but all the training in the world goes out the window if you, the chauffeur, forget to collect a fare or to adequately fill out and turn in your trip sheet, receipts, credit card vouchers, or cash from your clients. It's very important that you understand what the payment arrangements are on every trip. If you're supposed to collect cash up front from your clients, either collect the cash or call your office for instructions. If you're supposed to get a credit card imprint, make sure you know how to operate the card imprinter and make sure you know which credit cards your company accepts. Check the credit card carefully when you make your pickup. If the card differs from the one your office has an authorization for, call to confirm. Handle payment issues up front and call your office if there's a problem. You may feel that collecting money is awkward, but it is 100 times more awkward at 1 a.m. to let your dispatcher know you can't locate the party who was supposed to pay for the limousine. Beyond the obvious reasons, it's very important that you quickly turn in your paperwork and you make sure it's neat and accurate. As we said before, many times the backseat passenger is not the party who's paying the bill. A third party, for a variety of reasons, could arrange the trip. It could be a company bringing in a candidate for a job interview, or simply a visitor, or it could be a hotel that secures limousine service for a guest. In any event, on many occasions, the third party wants complete information on the trip so they can settle the charges. That is why it's critical for the professional chauffeur to quickly and accurately turn in the required paperwork. One of the most controversial, often confusing parts of the luxury transportation business involves gratuities or tips. Most companies automatically add between 15 to 20 percent gratuity to each trip. In some instances, the tip is given at the total discretion of the client. Number one, know and follow your company policy on receiving tips. Number two, if the gratuity is mandatory, tell the client at the appropriate time that the tip was included in the total charge. Number three, Make sure the client understands when the gratuity is included in the final charges. Quality veteran chauffeurs will advise you not to focus on tips. You will be surprised time and time again who does or does not tip you well. Focus on doing your job each and every day and tips will take care of themselves. It's a good policy not to discuss the tips you have received with anyone except your supervisor. Never discuss your pay or gratuities with your coworkers. It just causes trouble. Each and every client should receive the highest level of service on every trip, regardless of his or her tipping patterns. In the event that you believe you have been shorted by a customer on a gratuity, never confront the client. Report it to your supervisor. In the end, for every client who demands extra services for no additional gratuity, there is another client who will be unexpectedly generous. Now is as good a time as any to address a sticky problem. Smoking is always an issue. First, most limousine companies have a no smoking policy in all of their vehicles. Some states, California and New York come to mind, have laws banning cigarettes in places of public accommodation, which include chauffeured vehicles. 
In these states, a shofar merely reminds the client of the law. But keep in mind, smoking is a physical addiction for many people, and smokers especially need to smoke when they are stressed. Again, most airports and all flights are smoke-free, so your passenger may be desperate for a smoke. Always offer to pull over and let your client smoke as often as possible. If they insist on smoking in the vehicle, look for direction from your supervisor. The biggest complaint that limousine companies have about smoking is chauffeurs who smoke on the job and in their vehicles. Remember, you are constantly representing your company. It's simply unacceptable to smoke in your vehicle. If your company allows you to smoke on the job, make sure you have strong breath mints and a spray for your clothes. The most common vehicle used by luxury transportation companies is the L-Series Lincoln Town Car. This factory-built vehicle includes six inches of additional legroom plus upgraded passenger amenities. The most important part of the vehicle for the paying customer is obviously the back seat. Number one, the vehicle should be checked closely prior to the client pickup. Number two, you should make sure that the front passenger seat is in the extreme forward position. Number three, make sure the ashtrays are empty and the car smells clean. Number four, check the storage area behind both seats for trash or forgotten items. Number five, remember special amenities including newspapers, magazines, etc. A stretch limousine is still the standard of elegance in the luxury transportation business. The modern stretch may be a Lincoln, Cadillac, or sport utility vehicle. This vehicle is sometimes used for airport transportation, but is frequently the vehicle of choice for weddings, proms, and other evening social events. Unless they frequently travel in limousines, most people are unfamiliar with the backseat controls. The chauffeur must be able to get into the back of the vehicle and demonstrate the following. Number one, the heat and air conditioning controls. Number two, the intercom used to communicate with the chauffeur. Number three, the stereo, TV, DVD, and electronics operations. Number four, the lighting options. Number five, operating the solid and glass divider. Number six, other special amenities that may be relative to the vehicle you're driving, video games, moonroof, etc. It's an important part of the experience for the client to be able to fully operate the vehicle he or she has rented. The more the client is able to fully operate and enjoy the amenities in the back seat of the vehicle, the more they will enjoy the overall experience. It is also important to make sure that the vehicle is fully stocked with ice, water, soda, juice, and that there are clean glasses for customer use. SUVs and mini coaches are increasingly popular in the modern luxury transportation business. Many clients, especially in the 18 to 40 age group, have made the sport utility vehicle the new luxury vehicle of choice. From excursions to escalades, there's a new standard of luxury in the business. It's important for the professional chauffeur to deliver the same standards of service and to feel comfortable working with all the vehicles in your fleet. Let's review the basics that we learned in Chapter 3. Number 1. Speak slowly into your cell phone, radio, or Nextel and pronounce your words clearly. Number 2. Make sure you can easily locate the vehicle's owner's card, proof of insurance, and any permits. Number three, never discuss your pay or tips with your coworkers or fellow chauffeurs. Number four, make sure the vehicle is fully stocked with ice, water, soda, and juice, and that there are clean glasses and ice. 
Number five, never smoke or allow a passenger to smoke in the vehicle without checking with your supervisor. Pull over if a passenger wants to light up. Congratulations on completing the first part of our chauffeur training program. You are on your way to becoming a world-class chauffeur. After the completion of tape one, it's test time. You will now be given a test on part one of our program. Good luck. Here are the basics of airport pickups and drop-offs. Airport work is the backbone of many limousine companies. Timely pickups and drop-offs for busy travelers are a must. Regardless of what part of the country you're in, here are some basic procedures to follow. Number one, make sure your trunk is clean and empty to accommodate luggage. Number two, when picking up at a client's home, Make sure you confirm the pickup address and your route to the airport. Number three, take the client's luggage and carefully place it in the vehicle. Number four, when picking up at an office location, make sure you're given the correct entrance. Number five, many airport trips occur during rush hour. Be sure that you have plenty of time to get to the airport. Number six, depending on your company policy, it's a good idea to have coffee and a newspaper on runs before 9 a.m. Number seven, make sure you know the client's departing and arriving airline and flight numbers. Number eight, before you drop the client off, confirm their return information and remind them where their chauffeur will meet them in the airport on their return trip. It's very difficult to get passenger information from the airlines, so be extra careful to get it directly from the traveler. Number nine, don't make a special arrangement with a client arriving at the airport unless your supervisor is aware of the arrangement. Number 10, make sure your client has your business card. And here are some more critical items when doing airport work. Number one, monitor arriving flights closely. If your company does not have a flight tracking system, go to the airline website or call their 800 number to determine when the client's flight will arrive. Number two, make sure your pager, Nextel, or cell phone is turned on. Number three, when picking up at the airport, stand where the other chauffeurs are and make sure you have a large sign with your client's name or the company he or she is visiting. Be very careful to get the correct spelling of your client's name. Number four, be careful. Many frequent business travelers bring only carry-on luggage. They proceed immediately from the airplane to the back seat of your vehicle. If you have factored in time at baggage claim for their arrival, you may be late. Number five, if the client's home provides special challenges, such as a steep driveway or 15 steps to the front door, write it down on your trip sheet. This will allow your company to deliver better service in the future to this client. Number six, take the client's luggage and bring it to the front steps 
or into his home, depending on your company policy. One of the most important stressful trips for the professional chauffeur are wedding charters. The clients are often nervous and apprehensive and timing is critical. The professional chauffeur is much more than a driver on a wedding day. He or she is without a doubt a concierge on wheels. A professional chauffeur should have extra glasses and napkins, a corkscrew, trash bags, and plenty of ice among other items for wedding charters. Most importantly, the professional wedding chauffeur sets the tone for an entire day. He or she gives everyone a sense of calm for their big day. By projecting the confidence that comes with your experience and preparation, the entire day is more relaxing and enjoyable. Remember, you are the wedding expert. The fact that you have done many weddings gives you the confidence to keep everyone relaxed on a very stressful day. Here's a quick checklist for the professional wedding chauffeur. Make sure you are early and make sure you have mapped out the pickup address, where the church is located, the various locations pictures will be taken, and where the reception is to be held. Many companies offer that special wedding touch with products such as wedding horns, just married signs, roll out wedding carpet, champagne service, which makes a great photo opportunity for the bride and groom. These are the elements that will add to their wedding experience and ultimately the image of your company. Often the wedding party wants to decorate their chauffeured vehicle. Be careful. Never let them damage the vehicle or put tape or glue on painted surfaces. Ask your supervisor for guidance. Assist the bride in getting in and out of the limousine. Take special care in keeping her train or veil off the ground. Be ready with a sewing kit, safety pin, and extra handkerchief. Be ready for a wedding emergency will make you a hero. Take particular care in getting your clients in and out of the vehicles. Remember, they are wearing formal clothing and may be drinking. Most brides miscalculate the timing of their entire wedding day. Go over the schedule with the bride and wedding planner as soon as you arrive for your pickup. You may also want to review the schedule with the photographer. If you anticipate a problem in keeping with the schedule, call your supervisor immediately. Be careful in this area. Every bride and groom has the feeling that you are his or her private chauffeur for a day. Act like their private chauffeur, but set the schedule and boundaries clearly. You may be going to multiple locations for wedding pictures. Again, make sure the photographer knows what the schedule is and how much time he has to take pictures. As on any trip, Make sure payment is settled prior to the client's departure. It is very difficult to secure payment after arriving at the wedding reception. The most basic item for every professional chauffeur to understand about driving for proms or formal school dances is that your young clients deserve the same care and pampering that every other client receives. That means addressing them as Mr. or Ms., holding doors open, and assisting in any way possible. Many quality limousine companies will tell you that some of their best clients were introduced to their service when they went to the prom. Remember, prom attendees have parents and relatives that are clients or potential clients. Treat them in a first-class manner and you will be rewarded with good behavior. The only difference between prom charters and taking a CEO and his wife out on the town is that alcohol is strictly prohibited. It doesn't matter if someone in the vehicle is of legal drinking age. Alcohol is never permissible on prom charters. 
allowing this hard and fast rule to be violated may result in your arrest and the loss of your job. Believe it or not, sometimes parents and or other adults will tell you they'll allow their children to have alcohol on prom night. Don't let them do it. Call your office if you sense a problem in this area. When driving prom charters, make sure your young clients do not put themselves in danger by hanging out of the car or standing through the moonroof when the vehicle's in motion. Prom charters will be among the most enjoyable trips that you will do. By taking control of the trip and providing top flight professional service, you will impress your young clients. Finally, always make sure you have collected all fees due up front, especially on prom trips, as money may become an issue if the event runs over time. Many limousine companies transport athletes, celebrities, and VIPs on a regular basis. This includes trips back and forth from performance venues, to and from the airport, and around town limousine trips. Here are a few items to be especially vigilant about when dealing with celebrities and VIPs. Number one, you're not there as a fan, but a professional delivering professional services. Number two, no pictures or autographs with the celebrity client. Number three, suppress your natural urge to chit-chat with the client. Number four, maintain the client's privacy at all times. And lastly, be very careful getting the celebrity client into and out of your vehicle. Some limousine companies extend the job of professional chauffeur to include security and personal protection. Oftentimes the job is performed by an off-duty policeman. Here are a few items to keep in mind when providing this type of service. Number one, do not carry a firearm unless specifically authorized to do so by your supervisor and you must be properly licensed in the state you're working. Number two, your basic duty is to make sure your client is safe and secure at all times. Take this responsibility seriously and be vigilant at all times. Number three, make sure you always act as a physical barricade between your client and the public when they enter or exit the vehicle. Number four, if your client is engaged in illegal activity, notify your office immediately. Number five, always take the path of least resistance. Avoid trouble at all costs and call the police if you're confronted with a dangerous situation. Let's review what we've learned in chapter four. Number one, when picking up a client on an airport run, make sure beforehand that your trunk is clean and empty enough.